Hello again peeps. Um, I've been tinkering with the idea of fitting a different screen on my bike. Um, the Himalayan one is adequate but when you ride all year round in the winter, the snow, the hail, you know, and all that, you, you need a little bit more protection than, than what that, this one gives. Plus, I kind of toying with the idea of making the headlight turn with the handlebars not be fixed on those brackets. Um, and the screen I've got in mind is designed for that sort of system. So it sort of is curved over the headlight, but it also moves with the times. And because these handlebars and, and the, the hand guards on, it needs to to move with the handlebars. So um, I've taken a few photographs. So for you all know what these bikes look like, but. Um, I've basically take, taken that off. I've measured things. Um, I've uh, removed clocks. I might even do the little drill modification on, on the clocks to see if they stop missing. Having said that, having said that, um, they've not been missing up recently. Uh, is it because the humid weather we're having now? Who knows? I'm just going to see if it if it's cured now. If it does mist up again, I will just draw the back of it. Right, I've also removed this little piece. It's like Blue Peter, isn't it? Here's one I made earlier. Just get it out of the oven. Right, so we're left with this, basically. Um, we'll remove all this bracketry here. Oh, it's thundering. Did you hear that? Um, take this bracket off. And I'm going to use, basically these brackets to hold the headlight on the top on the top of the, the fork the forks there the fork tubes so yeah I've, uh, a couple of the guys have put a few links on uh, on the group there on the on the Himalayan UK group uh, of guys that have done this um, there's a chap in, in, in uh, um, India that's got these special little brackets which look very similar to this which bolt up underneath up under there there are two 10 mil bolts one either side which hold this wiry bracket on and I think he's utilized that to, to fix his new plate on up there I'm gonna see if I can clamp to that bracket if not I will make my own up or or find something that doesn't cost any money because how why spend money if you don't have to <laughs> um, so that's gonna house the clocks so if you notice I've noticed on the clocks I don't know whether this is Initially designed to be clock where it is. The, um, look at the arch bit there below. Now I think that fits very nicely. Why am I looking now? I should be looking at the camera. That fits very nicely on the ignition barrel. Thus. So my clocks are going to be kind of there. That's where I want them to be. So, yeah. So, um, it's going to look good, I think, when I'm finished. Anyway, I'm going to try and do it so as I don't disturb too much. So if I don't like it, it can go back to stock. And nothing's been damaged, nothing's been cut, modified in any any way, shape or form. Okay, that's about it for, for the time being, isn't it? Um, measurements of this new screen is 72 centimetres wide, which pretty much... Let me get my tape measure out. 72 centimetres is 72 centimetres is pretty much to the end of the of the the the, um, the hand grips. So that's quite a hell of a width. And I know for a fact that these this screen that I'm going to install uh, is very good at direct. It's not particularly high, but it's shaped in such a way that it's very good at directing air away from you up and over and around which is exactly what I'm looking for it may look completely shit at the end oops rubbish at the end of the day but then again it might just work I think without the bracketry on I think the whole Himalayan looks very looks a bit meaner I don't know if that's the right word to use it looks a bit more um the great escape doesn't it kind of kind of thing with the with the you know the big meaty single cylinder engine 
Anyway, I'm waiting on the screen to turn up. It's going to be a few days. I'm going to strip it down in the meantime because I'm, I'm on call and I've got the van. So I, c I can crack on, literally, and, and just do some bits. I've got to think about things like where I'm going to put the indicators and stuff like that. So I've also got to disturb the new spotlights I put on yesterday. <laughs> But small price to pay, hey. Um, thinking about it, when these brackets come off, you've got this you've got this rod either side of the engine, so that could uh, quite happily uh, take take a couple of spots. Right, I'm going to crack on. Anyway, okay. Thanks for looking, and uh, we'll continue this in a bit. Well, that's pretty much the front end I've taken apart. I've uh, taken some photos and that for you guys to see. So if you're thinking about doing it, just step by step, really a couple of tie wraps to clear. It's good to get these, these bits off of these cables. They're really restricting them. They are so free now. That is just spot on. Everything's going to last a lot longer. Look at the thread in there. Absolutely mullered. Who, who is doing that to these things? I mean, that that bolt's central to the hole. Look at look at that one. It's nowhere near central. It's just been I don't know. Well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dwell on that. It's just what it is, isn't it? Yeah. That, that. <laughs> anyway, that is a bucket load of weight. That really is. I can eat a few more pies now and the bike will still weigh the same. Joking aside, look at that. That looks mean, doesn't it? That looks proper mean now. I like that. Can't wait to go and jump over some fences now. Great escape. Yeah, it's gone on Steve McQueen. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So I've just got to take these off, move these brackets up and possibly invert them. Because the higher up I get my headlamp, the higher up the screen's going to be. But I can't really gauge that until I have the screen here. There's no point in me doing all that stuff now until the screen's on site. Okay, thanks for watching. Thanks for letting me bore you once again. And, uh, right, let's uh, see what happens. Hello, Mr. Quality. How are you doing? You all right? Yeah? Roar. Roar. <laughs> right, that's the state of play. Uh, let's get around here a bit. <clears throat> bit of a 
better look. Looks so strange, doesn't it, without them brackets on and the headlight and all that gubbins. Gubbins, is that the in word? I don't know. Anyway, like I say, waiting on the screen. That's the end of play today. I've done enough now. I've sort of temporarily fitted up my headlight and the um, the arms there and the speedo, and it sits really nicely. I just need to make something up that goes from under here. Just two brackets coming out to hold this, hold the clocks there, and the headlight almost reaches them. But I need I need to get some new ones there. You can get posher ones. They're, those are only sort of in a in a sort of 30 quid headlight kit, so they're nothing much, are they? So I'm going to get some nice alloy ones which come out a bit further. I think I need to be somewhere around 120 mil out to clear this on the back of the headlight unit. Uh, right, people are going to argue, well, you've taken away the brackets uh, and you're on about having a bigger screen for more winter protection and, you, and you've lost all your knee protection there from the elements. Well, I've not, it's, it's not unusual for me to make leg shields Leg shields, I hear you cry. <laughs> yes, leg shields. And I have the perfect starts each side for for leg shields. We have the two 10mm bolts here. I could run a beam across and it'll keep your feet dry. Nice nice pair of leg shields up out here like that going in. I've done it before. Um, if you check out on YouTube my Junio HM125-8 restoration I don't you know I don't even know if I've got leg shields on that. Well, I have got a video of leg shields on that bike that I made guess out <laughs> guess what out of three two one diddly did diddly did boo a wheelie bin yes a wheelie bin I cut a wheelie bin up with an angle grinder had the perfect curvature and I made some leg shields people laughed people cried people rejoiced it was weird but it worked Anyway, it's enough of me waffling. Right, till next time. Hi, good day, uh, friends. Um, I've been up in the loft. I thought I had I had a headlighty type thing up in the loft, and I found it. Um, and it's it, it's done. Jobs are good. What do you reckon? God, that looks horrendous, doesn't it? <laughs> oh dear, I'm, I'm just kidding. Seriously, I'm just kidding. Hey, my workmate popped over to give me a hand. Oh, he's really handy. Uh, okay, uh, I was having a rummage around and I found this. Anyone know what this is? It's upside down actually, but the two little hooks might give away in a big hole. It is a mounting plate for a, uh, a gas boiler. So yeah, it's two millimeter thick galvanized steel. I don't know what galvs like to paint. I'm going to find out soon. And it's perfect for what I think uh, I'm going to do the template from the old clock mounting on it and cut it out and uh, see what I have at the end of the day. Right. One last thing before I go and start doing some work. I've had a visit from the postman. Ha ha! And it is, if my Chinese is good, a cool mat for the seat. So that will be going on the main part of the seat. Uh, and if I've got enough, possibly the back bit as well. Um, yeah, I'm just going to try. Everyone says that they're good. Uh, this is the cheapest version on the planet. This is about four quid or something, four pound ninety-five or something or other. So I'll we'll give that a go as well. I've got my work cut out, haven't I? Right, I better crack on. Wow, this is my template, this is my clocks, 
Yes, sir. Can I help you? Yeah. Those three pins go in those three grommets. I'll do that in a minute. Yeah, that took some cutting. That was some seriously tough steel. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty confident. And when those clocks are mounted in there, excuse me, quality control officer, they then go in there like that. Where's the camera? There it is. And there's actually there's actually two bolts under there, each side, two 10 mil, uh, six mil threads. So that will bolt under there. And I should be able to fold up a little bit to match this curvature there. Yeah, that turned out all right, hasn't it? Flipping X, didn't take me an hour. Because we've got the angle grinder. Anyway, right, okay, to be, uh, to be continued. Right, that's it so far. Now it should just slide in there like so, like that. There. Coming on, my boy. How are you doing? Up. <laughs> He's a good boy. We had a cracking walk, didn't we? Well, I've just sort of mocked it up a little bit. Doesn't look too bad, does it? It's sort of in proportion, really. And that, yeah, you think so, don't you? He likes it. Yeah, he's a good boy. Rah. Yeah, okay, I've got the warren to sort out and that because, but I mean, um, Basically, the warren's got to be dressed very carefully behind here because there's the notch. Let's put some light on the subject. You've got the notch bracket there, which held the front bracket. Um, that's obviously rigid and fixed, and there's quite a few sharp edges on it. So I don't want anything snagging that as it's t as these handlebars and the yokes are turning around that. So. Yeah, those brackets look okay. Now, I've actually got some alloy ones coming. They're not full of holes. It doesn't look like they've been, you know, attacked by the by, yeah, somebody. Uh, they're, they're nice, plain alloy ones with a like a this kind of effect. So that's going to look good. I mean, but at the end of the day, that's, that's I think that's in proportion, isn't it? By the time the screen, I mean, the screen literally hugs this area. And I'm hoping the angle of it is going to be very tight, that. Mind you, I can maneuver. This is still unfixed. I've got to drill the holes yet and bolt them. But I don't know where to drill them exactly yet because I haven't got the screen. But I couldn't get anything longer than 150mm of these. I would have liked another inch. Oh, uh, missus, wouldn't we all? But uh, to bring that out just a bit further, just give me a little bit more to play with. But... I think that's in proportion. Oh, my tank bag. What's that tank bag? Nice big magnets in there. Sits on there, lovely, doesn't it? Got all the, got the gubbins on it, and you unzip it, and you can put your, put your uh, sat nav map in there. <laughs> all your pockets. Well, not so now. I haven't used this bag for donkey's years. Oh, that's all the protective stuff. I just, I found it in my shed. I, that shed, honest to God. I could probably build another bike out of the stuff in there. I just find this stuff, it's everywhere. Right, it's enough of me waffling. It's not bad, is it? I'm gonna keep the the Himala Himalayan headlight because it's part of the character of the bike. I've got that other jazzy LED effort, but it's not it's not good a quality as this one. I like this. So plus it's glass. And the back reflector is actually cast alloy. It's not plastic. So, well done him. Well done Royal Enfield. Bit of quality workmanship there. What's the clocks look like from up here? Spot on. I'm just hoping the screen's not going to look completely... What's the word I'm looking for without being rude? Silly. That'll do. Will you, will you silly? Right. Hmm. Pondering. 
Right, here's my homemade bracket out of a boiler mounting bracket. Uh, that's to take clocks. I've put my um, headlight brackets on, these are cast alloy. Uh, it's all yet to be bolted up, nothing's, uh, nothing's 100% yet. Um, yeah, I took the breather pipe off the tank. Look at the state of that, look. Made a hell of a hissing noise when I unplugged it. So that was blocked. I am going to completely reroute that pipe to somewhere where it doesn't kink. There must be a place for it. Anyway, what are you doing? Stupid boy. So, this will have a clocks on it. It will be mounted under there and bolted up under. I can't see it. Light on subject. No, you still can't see it. Yeah, you can just about see a bit of thread there. Well, there's two holes to either side. They are the remnants of the holes at the bottom of these. And these bolts there are in it. So that's going to hold my bracket on, hence the four holes. That will sit in there nicely. There's the headlight. Obviously I've got to do a little bit of adjusting here with the headlight so I can put the ignition barrel back in there. And then it's on with... I'm holding it like that because it's still wet. Do I want to be picking up my new screen with wet hands? Not really. Here's my new screen. <clears throat> it's made by Lextech. Part of the CM... CMPO people, which is Chinese Motor Parts organization. Covers the hand guards. The hands pretty well. Uh, sits around the headlight quite nicely and it should sit on there and it's 60mm uh, taller than the original fitment uh, yeah work in progress getting there right right I'm going to carry on right, I've just used Mr Angley grinder there for a specific purpose and here's a piece that it's taken off now that is 7mm. Okay, any ideas where that's from? It's threaded. No, it's not off the engine. Uh, those holes haven't got any threads in. <laughs> Belly laugh. Now, what I've done is I've taken off 7mm off each of these posts. Why have you done that, you cry? Well, because when this ignition barrel goes up in, now... It sits up. It sits. It was there. All your bikes are like that. Now, because I've moved my clocks, the curve of it to match the curve of the top yoke, because that's now there, I didn't want the key to sort of half turn. Hang on. There, the key might have fouled this. So I have taken 7mm off and now it sits there. There's plenty of thread in there, absolutely. There's 30mm of thread in that one. Why, why put 30mm of thread in there when you need thread elsewhere? Hint, hint. Anyway, so that key now will clear that quite clearly. So I've just got to bolt that up. Uh, and another thing, well, the reason I didn't take it any further is because on the back of the ignition lock you've got the pin which sits against this plate when you put your steering lock on. And that is about... I've still got a two or three mil to play with, to be fair, before the pin uh, is level with the top of that plate. So the pin's now sitting about there, as opposed to, you can see where it's been hitting the paint, look. So now I've taken the pin up to there. Completely, perfectly good. Why have you done that, E.T.? Well, it's obviously two reasons. One, so the key doesn't fail it. And two, because when that's there, this is technically further forward, isn't it? Slide that up, goes back in. And out there, it fouls the headlight. So just doing that little mod there makes it easier for me to fit the headlight. Ah, <sighs> Right. Okay, time for a brew.
Well, there's the screen on. Bye. Lextech. I've got a one of those rubber, what do you want to call it, like a cup thing. I'm going to put over that completely and seal that. So yeah, there it is. It's on. Not to everybody's liking, I know, but it's, it's sort of to my liking, and I kind of like the way, like the way the dash looks. This new sort of arch there. Cool. This protects your hands completely there, absolutely completely. Spotty dog. I'm really happy with the way that's turned out. Um, yeah, it's a bit higher than the original. But, uh, where I've had to drop the where I've had to drop the headlight down just a tat about an inch. Obviously, I've lost lost an inch height because I wanted that still to follow the contour of the headlight. Got to do a few bits and bobs yet. I've got to do something with this. Got to paint those brackets. This is just temporary, but I mean, this, this rock solid. This bit is proper on there. Yeah, well, that's taken many, many hours. Would I recommend anybody else do it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Be interesting to see what it's like, and what it performs like in the rain. Don't know. Kind of, I'm not sure if it takes away the Himalayan look or not. But the way those things are contoured, trust me, that screen is wicked in the rain and the wind. I've had that fitted to a few bikes. Right, I'm going to knock it on the head now. It's, it's, the sun's gone home. So, I'm going to tidy up all my mess. And, uh, flip a neck. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to ride it to work tomorrow because I want to see what this stuff's like. It feels good. I've had a sit on it. Feels alright, but you never know, dear. Right, I should let my people know. G'day, folks, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and all the rest of it, friends around the world. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty much done. Went for a decent ride today with the new screen uh, fitted from uh, Lextech or CMPO, Chinese Motorbike, motorbike Parts Online. Uh, no head buffeting whatsoever. Not that, that was a problem before. I'm on a motorcycle for goodness sake. You're going to get windy, you're going to get buffeted around. But there is literally none with this. I'm 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, on a good day when we still out is on. <laughs> um, yeah, spot on. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, you still get uh, wind noise, but that's where the earplugs come in, isn't it? Um, I've got a little bit of fanning around to do. I've got to take this back off and just paint those brackets um, matte black. Um, that's about it, really. Uh, uh, what else can I... Like? Oh, yes! Spotlights! 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 Oh, look at these babies. These are lovely, aren't they? Spot on. Absolutely spot on. So these are going to be going on. Um, where I've fitted a few of these screens before in the past, I've had the odd fitting kit lying around from previous screens. The, other, the screens are the same, but the quality of the fitting kits have gone right downhill. Uh, let me just show you what I mean. That is the bracketry for... Actually, I've actually used these ones. There. Uh, this is the new kit bracketry, and uh, this is the old kit bracketry. Let me hold them up together. <laughs> Completely different kettle of fish, isn't it? Anyway, the old kit came with these little clampy things that used to go around your handlebars, and then you put your nut and bolt through there, um, together along with one of these plasticky clippy things, uh, which would hold the rod. See the hole in there? And then it would go on and attach to your screen. Um, again, this is the new plasticky bit, and that's the old plasticky bit. Look at the difference in quality, that is so much more chunkier. Anyway, stop digressing easy and get on with the subject. Right, this 
I found goes round this stumpy bit here, which had the old uh, Royal Enfield bracket on the side there by the tank. That bracket fits round there absolutely brilliantly and clamps that piece in, in situ. Now all I've got to do basically is mount that on there. Jobs are good. Uh, uh, that. Spot on, you can angle it whichever way you want to angle it, but I'm just going to keep it uh, horizontal. Vertical. Oh, the flat, flat. I'm going to keep it flat. So yeah, that is a sweet, sweet spot, isn't it? So I'm just glad I never throw anything away. That's why my shed is full of just old trinkety stuff that I I always end up using it. If I throw it away, I'm going to miss it. Right, so I'm going to crack on and get on with these spots. Um, I might even do the painting another day. It's just such a nice evening. I don't want to waste too much of it tinkering. I want to get out there. Right, okay, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll take some pictures whilst I'm doing this. And, uh, yeah, thumbs up. Right, what I've had to do here, basically this horn was there and there's a little tiny hole in the frame there which this lug went into to keep the horn on the level. Uh, but because I had to move it down to make way for the bracket for the, for the spotlight, I've turned the brackets around so the pegs this end. So I haven't cut anything off, it can always go back to standard as and when. Uh, these brackets, the paint's coming off already and I've replaced uh, that bolt for a Honda one. There's the other one, the old one. Uh, I'll say the old one, it's four months old. <laughs> anyway, not picking holes. Um, I could have just given it a coat of paint, couldn't I really? But there we go. I've, turned, I've moved the cables around the front here, uh, away from the hot exhaust pipe there. Uh, and also one of these terminals literally fell off of the uh, the Lucar terminal on the horn because it wasn't crimped up tight enough. So I've had to recrimp that. Good job I took that off, wasn't it? It could have failed. Anyway, onwards and upwards. Let's get the other one mounted up. This is the first one. It's looking the nuts, isn't it? Right, it's all wired in. Let's uh, put the ignition on. Go, okay. right, flip the switch on, boom. Jobs are good, now, I reckon. Right, let's put that ignition off. One other little thing I just noticed. Um, I'm sure I've seen it. <laughs> ah, you don't want to do that. I'm sure I've seen it mentioned before on the uh, Himalayan Group UK, and that's the oil pipe here. See here? That's actually knocking against the frame there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna utilize one of these pieces of plastic. I'm gonna cut a nice little size slot and sort of tie wrap it around the frame so that pipe, the oil cooler pipe, is actually sitting against this plastic, not against that sharp edge. It's literally a saw, isn't it, that sharp edge? Right, uh, job done. And uh, yeah, job done. I think that's about it, really. Um, Thanks for looking, subscribe, like, dislike, comment, uh, whatever you like to do. Thank you for watching, thank you for spending your time. Uh, next video I will be taking off these linkages and seeing what the situation is with the oil seals in there and the bushes. Okay, right, I'm going, lots to do, no time to do it in. Take care guys.